Let's see if our gin's down there. Should one set their display brightness to the maximum or 100% in the menu? The answer is no most of the time, but displays typically come preset with their brightness set to 100% or the maximum in the menu or on-screen display. Figuring out the right balance between display brightness, room lighting brightness, and display placement are key to ensuring a display looks as good as possible. Before going further, make sure to watch my display placement guide called IPS vs TN right and wrong ways to user view and how to vastly reduce AHVA IPS and PLS glow and increase the perceived black depth which is linked to in the video description. Due to vertical gamma shift or uneven color from top to bottom, TN panels should not be used for viewing this video or comparing the photos in the Steemit post linked below in the video description, and nor should displays with extremely low brightness outputting less than 80 CDM squared brightness, such as a cell phone or tablet used in the dark with their brightness set to zero. All monitors were calibrated as well as possible using their menu settings with an X-Ray i1 Display Pro colorometer or SpectraCal C6 HDR2000 and matched to 140 cm2 brightness and connected to a PS4 or PS4 Pro. The same camera settings and same $15 CFL Philips 2600 lumen daylight or 6500K color temperature ceiling light was used for all photos, unless the lights are turned off. I use a colorometer and change the display brightness settings in the menu to output 140 cdm2 when measuring white since it pairs nicely with my 2600 lumen ceiling light. Found a wreck. It's been here a while. The top left image shows the correct way to view an AHVA IPS or PLS panel and is also ideal for keeping proper posture and not hunching. The top of AHVA IPS and PLS panels needs to line up or be higher than the viewer's eyes to eliminate glow. A high amount of AHVA, IPS, and PLS horror stories about glow and light bleed are the result of improper use, such as keeping the brightness maxed while looking down at or viewing the AHVA, IPS, or PLS panel from above. The photo is taken while looking down at or viewing the monitor from above which is correct for TN panels, but incorrect for AHVA, IPS, and PLS panels. Got a chest. Now that's what I call war booty. In this lights on comparison, on the left is the ViewSonic set to 100% brightness, outputting over 370 CDM squared or lumens, while on the right the ViewSonic is set to 33% menu brightness, which outputs 140 CDM squared when measuring white. Have you found the gin? No. But I found something that could be just as valuable to me as the gin is to you. This photo comparison has the monitors with the same settings. So on the left, the ViewSonic's menu brightness is set to 100%, outputting over 370 CDM squared. While on the right, the brightness is set to 33% in the menu and is outputting 140 CDM squared. When the lights are off, the monitor's low 1001 contrast or high measured black depth becomes quite apparent. Lowering the brightness helps greatly, but the display is too bright and its contrast is too low for lightless room use. My solution to those who do not own a colorometer to measure the brightness of their display is to use a search engine to find reviews with 0 to 100% or 0 to 100 menu or on-screen display colorometer measurements of the brightness, contrast, and black depth in order to get an idea of how bright a display is. Here are three examples of the brightness and contrast colorometer measurements of the 0 to 100% menu or on-screen display settings for the ViewSonic XG2703GS from three different reviewers. Here is my XG2703GS brightness, contrast, and black depth measurement chart from my review which is in progress and linked to in the video description along with my best reviewed flicker free 144Hz to 240Hz monitors buying guide which contains lots of review summaries and many review links to multiple websites. The second solution to vastly improving a display is to figure out how bright the room lights are 
or consider using curtains if sunlight is the only light source during the day. Check the box the lights came in to see if the lumens or brightness is listed, or check the bulb itself. Many lights do not have any information about their brightness or even color temperature printed on the box or bulb, which makes determining their brightness impossible, as well as their color temperature, without a colorometer to measure both. As previously mentioned, I use a CFL ceiling light, which I purchased for $15 Canadian, plus tax, over three years ago. CFL lights lose brightness over time, and if broken, are hazardous. Similar LED equivalents exist, but they cost significantly more. Here's an example of a similar but slightly warmer or more orange or yellowy 5000K or color temperature 2500 lumen or brightness LED light made by Lojas. I'm not endorsing this light since I have not used it. However, given the potential safety issues, I suggest spending more on an LED light. Also note that buying the LED light directly from Lojas may not be the cheapest way to get these lights. The next step is to find out which display menu or on-screen display setting equals to around 140 CDM squared if going to use a 2500 lumen light as a ceiling light in a room with no other light sources. If wanting to use the 2500 lumen light as a bias light, which is a light placed behind the display to avoid glare and reflections, cap the brightness at around 100 CDM squared. If wanting to set the display brightness higher, a brighter light is needed to combat the higher display brightness. A 4000 lumen bias light, or light placed behind the display, can combat a display outputting around 200 CDM squared and less than 250 CDM squared. I also own this Fight Electric 4000 lumen 5000K or color temperature LED light which costs $35 US and $50 Canadian, as well as only needs 38 watts of power, which is a low enough amount to work with most lamps. The light is heavy though, so make sure to put it in a lamp that will not fall over and in a place where it cannot be easily knocked over. As previously stated, I use a Philips 2600 lumen daylight or 6500K color temperature as my ceiling light and five Lithix BR30 lights as bias lights which are lights placed behind my triple monitor setup. I replace the 4000 lumen fight LED light with the Lithix lights since their color can be changed and because equivalents with the features I wanted were not reasonably priced or available where I live at the time of purchase. Note that only certain color temperature settings output the maximum brightness or lumens listed in the specifications of color changing lights. I I use bias lighting for media since I like to avoid seeing glare or reflections and because one of my monitors, the HP 24 NV, uses a glossy coating which looks washed out when light shines on it. Here's the ViewSonic XG2703 with my Philips 2600 lumen daylight or 6500K ceiling light. And now here it is with two Lifix BR30 lights placed behind the monitor set to 6500K. Notice how different the LED backlit Lifix BR30 lights display 6500K compared to my 6500K CFL light. Here is the ViewSonic again with two Lifix BR30 lights placed behind the monitor set to 6500K. And here it is with four lights, all set to 6500K. Here it is again with two lights set to red. And here it is again with four lights set to red. Two of the four Lifix lights are placed behind my other monitors off to the right, but are not directly shining on the monitor. Though it should be obvious that a bit of glare leaks out onto the display. You're getting better at this. Going in quicker if you helped me down there. I prefer to observe matters from up here, most definitely. Yeah, like when we were looking for the Golden Dragon and the avalanche swept us off the trail. Me clinging to the remains of a bridge for dear life. You gripping my waist, admiring the view. Remember? Chasm below us was breathtaking. Rustling trees, a lazily flowing stream. I remember. Though I found myself admiring what I had right in front of me. My display buying guides 
are based off of my own reviews and reviews from 15 sites, and a link to a post as well as a video where I go over all of the 15 plus review sites I use is linked to in the video description called Monitor Review Resource Center.